Welcome to ElectronLine. Now let's take a closer look at the unit impulse function, also known as the delta function in mathematics. Here we realize that the definition of the delta function, or the unit impulse function, is that it's equal to zero for time less than zero, zero for time greater than zero, and infinity for time equal to zero. In other words, for an infinitesimally small amount of time, time approaching zero, you end up with an infinite amplitude. Now if we integrate over that function from minus infinity to infinity, but of course since everything is equal to zero except at time equals zero, we can of course narrow that integral to something slightly less than zero and slightly more than zero of the delta function and by definition the area underneath that curve equals one. We also realize that we don't have to have the function right at time equals zero, we can move it to some other time, let's say time sub naught which is greater than zero, or time or minus time sub naught which is smaller than zero. And then the delta function, instead of writing it as the delta function of t, we can write it as the delta function of t minus t sub naught, which means it's shifted to the right by the amount t sub naught, or the delta t plus t sub naught, which means it's been shifted to the left by the amount of time of t sub naught. Also, we use the delta function sometimes in conjunction with another function. With other words, sometimes we multiply another function with the delta function. What happens when we do that? Well, realizing that the del delta function equals zero everywhere except when time equals zero, that means this function is only valid at the point where time equals zero. Or, if we have a delta function which is shifted, either by some value, let's say t sub naught, or some value, let's say, equal to four, that means that this function is only valid at that moment in time because since it's multiplied by the delta function, and the delta function is zero everywhere else, that product will always be zero except for the one point where it's not zero. And it turns out that let's say we have a function like a sine wave or a cosine wave, like in this case that would be kind of like a cosine wave. And let's say we multiply that function f of t times the delta function. Well, we can have the delta function, which means that it's infinite at time equals zero, or infinite at time equal t sub naught, or infinite at time equals four. When we multiply that times our function, and then we integrate, over that from let's say point A to point B so that those points are included you can then see that the integral from A to B of the function times the delta function equals the magnitude of the function at the point where the delta function intersects with the function. Here the magnitude is 5 so when we integrate we get 5 here the magnitude is 2 so when we integrate we get 2 and here the magnitude is minus 3 so when we integrate we get minus 3. You may wonder how can that be? Well, it actually makes sense when you look at it here from a theoretical point of view. Here we have the general format of the function times the delta function shifted by some arbitrary value t sub naught. We're going to integrate that product from a to b, making sure that this point right here is somewhere inside the interval from a to b. When we do that, we realize then we multiply the function times this, the function is only valid at that one point in time, t sub naught, so therefore we can replace f of t with f of t sub naught, because that function, everywhere else, when I multiply it times the delta function, I get zero, because the delta function is zero everywhere else. And since we then realize that it's simply a singular value of that function, it's a constant, we can move it outside the integral sign. So now we have the function evaluated at that particular location in time, or at that particular moment in time, I should say, because time is not, of course, not a location, integrated times the delta function of t minus t sub naught dt. But then we realize from the definition of the delta function that that integral is equal to 1. So now we have the function evaluated at that particular moment in time times 1, or simply it becomes the function evaluated at that particular moment in time which means when we integrate any function multiplied times a delta function, which is being shifted for a certain amount of time t sub naught, that integral from a to b, making sure that that includes the point where they intersect, then we get the function evaluated at that particular point. And that's a very good equation to remember because it's going to be used quite a bit in the future.
So now we know and understand a little bit more about the unit impulse function, also known as the delta function.